the Kings, they made a trade, a weird trade, a, a strange trade, not spooky, weird, like Halloween style, but weird enough to where you go, hmm, what are they planning here? Because the Sacramento Kings, they attach a second round pick plus cash to Jalen McDaniels, send her to the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs don't want him. The Spurs are just going to wave him. What the Spurs are doing is they're taking whatever the difference is going to be. And last I saw, the amount of cash being sent hadn't been revealed yet. But they're going to take the difference between McDaniel's contract, which I recall was about 4.7-ish, 4.8-ish million yep. bucks, and then subtract whatever, however much cash the Kings send over, whatever the difference is, that's essentially what the Spurs are paying for a second-round pick. But why are the Kings doing this, Keith? This gives them more wiggle room under the luxury tax. They're now over $5 million below the tax. They were just over $1 million below the tax before. But now they have to fill a roster spot. So what's going on in Sacramento? Yeah, and the reason they have to fill a roster spot is the Kings now will drop to 14 players on, or excuse me, 13, 13. players on standard yeah. contracts. And you can only do... Uh, two weeks at a time and 28 total days with less than 14 players under contract in, in an NBA season. So that means they're going to have to uh, fill that 14th spot at some point. Sounds like to me, the initial read on all this, and then I did some checking was Jalen McDaniels, just not a big part of things for the Kings. They, they, they weren't looking at him as being someone who was going to be a rotation guy uh, mm -hmm. for them. You, you, you're not going to find him there. Our wizard over at spot track, Scott has already moved him along uh, to, to the Spurs, um, but was not going to be a rotation guy. So for the Kings, it was eh, 4.7 million or whatever it is. Uh, we, we don't really need that. We'd rather have the wiggle room under the tax line, almost 6 million total now under the tax line and the open roster spot. So we're willing to give up a second round pick to move off of uh, McDaniels. I then read last night as I was getting ready for bed, Jason Anderson of the Sacramento Bee reported, this might be the precursor to a much bigger move for the Kings. Yeah. I did not hint at at all what that might be or, any, or anything like that, but the Kings have been very open about they went and got DeMar DeRozan. They re-signed Malik Monk with the idea of we're going for it. We are trying to be not just – they broke the playoff uh, drought a couple of seasons ago. We are trying to get back into the playoffs, but not just get back in. Like we want to be a contender in the Western Conference. And and may, maybe there's another big move out there that they're going to make. We'll, we'll see. I, I don't know what it would be at this point in time. Like it seems a little – like, all right, what would it be? There's no – glaring needs on this roster where yeah. it's like oh my gosh they don't have this or that like then nothing jumps out fully at you when you look at their their team but I, i'm i'm intrigued at least from that respect so keith here's the here's the thing and this is why something is fishy here if you're sacramento and you're going all in to try to win right now right you as you said that's that's what they're trying to do you didn't need to move McDaniels. You didn't need to do this. You could say, well, it saves us four million bucks, whatever, whatever it is, his salary minus the money that you had to give up in cash. It saves us a few million million dollars. That's not nothing. Well, sure, but for a team that's going all in to, to win right now, you don't want to give up a second round pick just to save a few million dollars because that second round pick could be the difference between getting a deal done or not at let's say the trade deadline that's going to put you over the top. So you don't want to give up that second round pick, even if it saves you a couple million bucks, if you're really trying to win right now. And that's your plan. Now, if they were dropping below the luxury tax, I would say, okay, I get it. They drop below the luxury tax. This is, I mean, not just are you saving the money on his contract, but now you're going to get a check from the teams who paid the luxury tax. It's a big swing financially. It's a much bigger deal. That would make some sense. That's not the case here. And so, it only makes sense if there is something else that they're planning. I've seen some Kings fans that said, well, maybe maybe it's Marco Fultz. Maybe we'll bring him in. Is it cash plus a second round pick? Is it worth that to, just to get Marco Fultz? I don't, I mean, maybe, maybe, yeah. but I don't, it does feel like there's something else going on here to create that urgency for the Kings to say, yes, we will surrender an asset that we could use in the future in order to free up this room right now. Typically, teams don't open up room like this unless they need that room. And so yeah, it, I, it seems a little strange here. 
And to your point about if this was just about getting under the luxury tax, if this was done in February and it was like, yeah. we need to do this to get get to get away from the tax. Okay. The teams do that all the time. Yes. Like that's just smart business. You know, I always say if you're within range of avoiding luxury tax, you should, there's just one is from a, you know, ownership perspective, I'm going to get that check from the league. And two, the second part of that is if you're thinking you might be in the tax in any future years, just stop the repeater clock. Like don't, 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 don't Great kick point. a year off that thing unless you really absolutely are ready to do that. Uh, you know, Markel Fultz, interesting. I don't know that they have a huge need for him there in Sacramento. It's a pretty good guard group as it is. You've got obviously Darren Fox, who we're going to talk about a little bit more here in a minute. He's going to play 35 minutes a night for you as your mm -hmm. starter. Malik Monk, Jordan McLaughlin, eventually the rookie, uh, Devin Carter. Those guys will all play backup level of minutes. Keon Ellis is another guy. He's played uh, kind of really any of the perimeter spots, uh, one, two, and three uh, for Sacramento over a couple of years. They love him in his defense there. My guess is this was just about flexibility. And let's let's get to a point. Maybe they've got a two-way guy they really like. And they're like, you know, that we want to move one of our two-way guys over now. We'll still have an open rush spot. We'll still have a bunch of, you know, ability to do something. Maybe there is something bigger coming. Something bigger coming just seems a little weird. We don't generally get to a week from the season and then get a big, big trade like that. Keith, I've had so because we've said that so many times. I've had so many people every time any kind of move happens. No, I've got people going, but you said there's no moves this time. You know, <laughs> it's rare. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Yeah. It's rare. It's not normal for a lot of trades to happen this time of year. I know we've seen a few things happen. Obviously, the Carl Anthony Towns last year. We had Damian Lillard. It's just not a every year, year in, year out. You yeah. can set your watch and know there's a trade coming right before the season yeah. starts. No, that that it's more of a rare thing. That's all. Not saying it never happens. Just saying it's rare that we see trades happen this time of year. Yeah, I want to hit on one more thing before we move off this topic. What happened to Jalen McDaniels? Like, he was a nice player for the Hornets. Uh, in his last full season with Charlotte, I had pulled it up here. He was at, let's see, 48% from the field, 38% from three, averaged 6.2 points. Not like, oh my gosh, this guy's an all-star or anything, but just a nice player. The next year, the efficiency dipped. Some, um, especially with the Hornets, as he was in a bigger mm -hmm. role, but he had 10 points per game, five rebounds per game. Looked like he was going to be pretty solid. Then he got traded to Philly. Doc Rivers never really fully trusted him, didn't didn't play him too, too much, but still shot well. And then last year, completely cratered and fell apart in Toronto in a spot where by the, the end of the season, there was all the minutes he possibly could have had there. So also for the Kings, weird situation, right? You traded... Davian Mitchell and Sasha Vezinkov and picks to get Jalen McDaniels. Mostly the idea was to get off Vezinkov, who the Raptors waived for nothing. He gave back his entire contract. So you essentially gave up Davian Mitchell and draft assets to, like, why? So just, just a little odd there. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Jalen McDaniels uh, shines off him as a prospect. He's going to be 27. So, yeah, but that's I don't know. I used to like him thing. quite a bit. That's the other piece of that. Like when you add it all up, the sequence of events. Yeah. Like that. Why would you do uh, like, is it's just, it's a weird sequence of events. It's optically a strange thing for a front office to do because people will say, what do you, we just gave up like multiple picks to net nothing, right? Just to move off of Vezinkov. We also lost Davion Mitchell. You know, we got, I mean, you, you can say you cleared some more flexibility and everything, but a weird sequence of events when you could have at least said, yeah. well, Jalen McDaniels, we, we really wanted to give him a look. Well, it didn't work out, right? But now already you're cutting him now uh, or moving off of him now. It just, it, there has to be urgency. There has to be something driving that for the Kings. Now, maybe Jalen McDaniels just isn't good at this point. Do you, is he going to get another look somewhere? Does he land somewhere in the NBA this season? I'll say yes, only because he is like 6'9", 6 6'10". 6 Guy teams love athletic forwards with size that can at least have shown the ability to shoot it a little and hold their own defensively. So my guess is probably, but he might be somebody who has to go to the G League for a couple months and, and rehab his value a little bit there. May, maybe after he's waived, one of these teams with an open spot says, actually, you know what, we, we're, we'll we give you a spot and bring you in mm -hmm. you know, on, on a 
partially guaranteed contract or non-guaranteed or whatever. But yeah, he's certainly not going to get close to 5 million, which was what he was set to make this year. That's not going to happen. All right. So last thing on, on all of this, Sacramento, a team to keep an eye on. If they are going to make a big move to me, the contract that makes sense to move would I'm keeping an eye on Kevin Herter. Cause I don't yep. think any of the other big money guys, Sabonis, Fox, Monk, those guys aren't going to DeRozan. Those guys are all aren't going anywhere, nor that, you know, or are not able to go anywhere. So it's, that's not happening. So Kevin Herter would be the guy to keep an eye on if, if there is some kind of big move coming for Sacramento. Yeah. Kevin Herter has been kind of relegated to like third, fourth wing status in their rotation as it is. Anyway, uh, he's behind. Sounds like they're going to start key on Ellis next to deer yeah. and Fox. Keep Malik Monk in that six man role. So that means Herter gets pushed to kind of back up forward status behind uh, Keegan Murray and DeMar DeRozan. And that's not terrible. Like he could still yeah. play and play fine, but, but you're absolutely right. I mean, we're talking 16.8 million. That's a nice tradable chunk. And if a team looks at it and says, all right, Kevin Herter can come to us and be a part of our wing rotation as a uh, perimeter shooting thread and guy who's had some nice years. I mean, he was coming off a career year with Sacramento. He had played really mm -hmm. well his first year there. So uh, yeah, there, there's definitely, that seems like the guy that would have to be part of something here if there's something else coming, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, my, my guess is this is more about, let's save some flexibility. Let's see, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, they, they've got something cooking there that, that, that we don't know about and they're ready to go.